Hello and welcome again. In the previous video we discussed the key schedule for the 190-bit uh, key length for the advanced encryption standard. Uh, so now we're gonna discuss the last uh, key length which is the 256-bit key, uh, key length for AES. Now uh, as I mentioned before this is gonna be a little bit similar to, to what we have done. There's a little bit difference here. There's a little, little extra function that we need to use uh, to be able to do the uh, key schedule. So let's recall uh, the basics. So when we have the advanced encryption standard and we have a 256-bit uh, key, then we have the advanced encryption standard will have 14 rounds. And because we have 14 rounds, it means that we're going to need 15 uh, sub-keys. And uh, again, each one of them is 128-bit each. So it doesn't matter what the key length of the original key is, all the sub-keys will all of them have 128-bit uh, length. So we need to generate 15 of them. And remember the reason is because the number of sub-keys is always equal to the number of rounds plus one. So let's look at that. So uh, this is the uh, first round here. And actually that's all of them. Yes, that's all of them. All right. So the first iteration here or round is, is here, this one, this is the round. And I hope this is not too small for you uh, here. So basically what I have here in this part that I'm marking down with this uh, green block, that is the original key, that is 256, uh, 256 bit uh, length. Now the same idea as before is gonna, is gonna happen. So in here, uh, I hope you can see that, there are some Ks there. It runs from K0 to K31. So in total, I have 32 Ks there. Each one of them represents a byte. So K0 will be a byte, K1 will be a byte, and so on and so forth. Now, as we did with the other ones, uh, then we're gonna divide that into four bytes. So K0, K1, K2, and K3 will be the first block of four bytes, which of course gives me 32 bits here, similar for the next block of four bytes, and so on and so forth. And now remember this is the original key here, that's the original key. And the reason we have uh, from K0 to K31, which is a total of 32 uh, bytes, is because when you take 256 that I have here and divide it by eight, you get 32. So you get a total of 32 bytes in this whole original key. So something similar is gonna happen here. So what happens here is you have this four bytes here, you copy those and you name that W0. The next four bytes, you name it W1 and so on and so forth. Uh, so until you get from W0 to W7. So basically what you are doing is dividing the key into four bytes of, of blocks of four bytes. Now this is structure that we have in here uh, the one that I'm marking down with the, the uh, red arrow, that's the first iteration of the key schedule here. As you can see here, the situation is very similar. You have uh, sorts all the way down here. And um, we have the function g, which is the same function we saw before. Again, let's recall that the function g takes an input, which is a 32-bit block. In this case, it will be W7 or the last four bytes. That's the input of the G. And the G function, as we described it uh, earlier in two videos ago, um, then it's going to produce a 32-bit, and it's going to sort that with the first four bytes, which is a 32-bit block. You sort that, and you generate here the W8. So, or the first four bytes of the next uh, iteration here. All right, so the G function, okay, we know uh, what that is. Now there's a little, little extra function here, H, which is gonna be very similar to the G, and in a sense, it's a little bit easier. So it's not gonna have the left shift, and it's gonna, not gonna have the RC. It's just gonna be um, computing Xboxes here. So, but I'll describe this, this function H in a second. Now the situation here in this iteration is similar to what we did in the other ones. So let me let me just to, just to um, emphasize what we did last time. 
is okay so how do we obtain this w8 that is right here again i hope you can see this small uh thing here uh the reason is this is small is because i have more things going on in here so that's why i cannot make it a little bit bigger there so the w8 here let's see what it comes from so this comes from the sort of w0 and the output of the function g and so the output of the function g comes from this input that is the last four bytes so you take the last four bytes you put it as an input of the function g it comes out with 32 bits sort that with w0 and that, that's how i generate the w8 that's my w8 now where does this uh, w9 come w9 come from so let's go trace back that's coming from a sort of w1 so you take the w1 here and you take the w8 and then you sort those and you put it in w1 you continue like that here okay it's exactly the same is gonna happen with let's look at w11 here so w11 where does it come from well it comes from the w3 which is right here this is w3 sword with w10 so that's where the w11 comes from now there is a little bit of difference here in w12 now for w12 what's gonna happen is this w12 comes from the sword of w4 and the output of this function h now this function h that you see right here and i hope this is not too small for you this function h takes as an input okay, this arrow and this input is actually w11 so w11 comes in here which is a 32 bit block it comes into inside the h so it has the same size input as the function g so h has an input of 32 bit and it outputs a 32 bit so the input of the h here will be w11 in this iteration iteration one so you take the 32 bit put it in h then the output will be a 32 bit you sort that output of h with w4 and that's what the w12 is that's the special part here so the w12 here this this guy here in the middle is the special part where the h comes from here now the next sorts are uh, exactly the same as the other one the h only plays a role in this part of the iteration so i have iteration one here iteration two will have exactly the same um, same structure here inside now w13 here where does it come from well it comes from sorting the w5 and w12 and so on and so forth until you generate f to w15 now you're gonna do this uh seven times here so seven iterations those seven iterations so iteration one through iteration seven from one through six all of them look like the first one so like this all of them look like this like this structure here the very last one that's iteration seven is gonna look like this so in iteration seven i don't have h the function h i just have the function g which is the one we described a, a while ago and we only have four sorts there so i go from w0 so basically what this is key schedule is producing is producing a bunch of w's w0 all the way through w59 so basically i'm producing 60 w's here those w's are gonna be the ones that's gonna make my sub keys here so again i'm gonna repeat that again so the iteration one through six all of them look similar to this one so iterations one through six all of them will have the function h and the function g the last iteration does not have the function h but it does have the function g and it's, this is small here so if you look at this part here this is actually exactly the same structure we have for the 128 bit length so this one here and so that's that's the iteration so that's how you uh, generate all the keys here so how many keys do we need to generate so remember we need to generate 15 sub keys each one of them of 128 bit uh, length so let's see how we generate now. Now remember that we what we did here in this key schedule is produce these W's that are here. Each W is 32-bit block. 
So if you put together four of them, you're gonna get a total of 128 bit. And that's how you're gonna generate your sub keys. So, so let me, that's what I said here. So 60 blocks of 32 bits are produced in this key schedule that we have here. And so we have the 32 bit blocks are called W0, W1, up to W59. So from zero to 59, there are 60 blocks. So how is the first key? Well, as you can imagine, of what we did with the last one, you just take the first four blocks of 32 bits, so W0, W1, W2, and W3. Each one of them is a 32-bit block, so if you add all the 32-bit blocks here, you're gonna get a total of 128. The second subkey, exactly the same, from W4 through W7, and again, because I have four blocks of 32-bit each, then I have a total of 128-bit here. So this subkey is 128 bits. The second subkey is 128 bits. And all of them will give me 128-bit uh, length of the subkey because that's what we want. We want all the subkeys to be exactly the same as 128-bit blocks. All right, so the last subkey, which is the 15 subkey, the very last one, will just be the last four 32-bit blocks, which is W56, W57, W58, and W59. And that's how you produce all the subkeys. So basically, the key schedule, the key schedule for uh, 192 and 256, what they're doing and it's producing just the Ws, and then you take four Ws at a time, four blocks at a time of 32-bit, and that's how you produce the whole the, the whole uh, uh, subkeys here. So in this case, we have 15 subkeys in this case. Now, there is one more thing I have to discuss here and is uh, the function h, which is in all the iterations, except for the last one. So from iteration one to iteration six, I have two functions, g and h. g is already described in detail in previous videos, but h is not. And so in h appears here in this, in this part, in this middle part here, but it doesn't appear in the last one, the last iteration. So what is the function h doing? So let me scroll all the way down and let's see what the h is doing. So this is the function h. As you can see here, uh, the function h, the structure of the function h, h is quite similar to the g function. And it takes an input of a 32 bit and then we're gonna divide that input into v0, v1, v2, and v3. This v0 through v3, these are just a byte. So the v0 is the first byte, v1 is the second byte, v2 is the third, and v3 is the fourth of byte. So you take the 32-bit here and divide it into four bytes. Now, if you remember what the g function does, the g function does here is it does a left uh, shift. Now, in the h function doesn't do that. Just, to, just keep it like this. You just keep the 32-bit just like that. Now, if you remember again the g function, um, you also do the s box, and this is the x box for the advanced encryption standard. So you're gonna apply the x box to this v0, which is the four, um, this eight bit, and you apply it for the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. So you applied all of them. And the, now the x box. Remember, this is the, for the advanced encryption standard, the x box. Now. If you are, don't remember how this is done, I recommend that you actually go back and see that video of how to apply the Xbox for a byte, which is the byte substitution layer of the advanced encryption standard. Now, once you apply the Xbox here, then you just put them together. So whatever the output of V0 here, the Xbox will output me a byte. This is also a byte. This is a byte. This is a byte. So I put together these four bytes that come out of here, the X boxes, and that gives me the 32-bit block that I need as an output. Now, if you remember from the function H, there was some RCI going on in here that it was sorted with this guy. That doesn't have, the function H doesn't have that. So in a, in a sense that the H function, well, in a sense, is actually easier than the G function. The, it doesn't have any left shifts, and it doesn't have the RCI in here. So the H function is exactly the same for all the rounds. It doesn't change with the rounds. 
Now remember the G function, it does change with the round. So every round has a different G function because the RCI here is different. Now if you don't recall that, then you go need to go back to videos and watch that because I explain in detail what the RCI does in here for the G function. So that's basically uh, all I have to say about the key schedule because we describe all the key schedules for all the key lengths, 128, 192, and 256, which is this very last one that has this special H uh, going on in there. So that's actually all I have to say about the key schedule. So the key schedules all depend on the key size and they will always produce every sub key will always be 128 bit. Doesn't matter what the initial key is. It's all the sub keys are all of them 128 bit uh, length. So that's all I have to say about this. So in the next video, we'll continue um, looking at some other encryption here. So I will see you in the next video.